Fifth grade ELA text set six. Freedom. The essential question is what is freedom and how does the desire for freedom drive people to action? The read aloud goal is to identify the author's purpose in writing Dia's story cloth. Let's talk about what it means to be a refugee. This book is a memoir for it by a woman who came to the United States as a refugee in 1979. The author's name is Dia Cha and the book title is Dia's story cloth. This is a picture of Dia's story cloth. What are your thoughts about it? First, I'm going to read what the author says about the story cloth, and then we'll hear her story. This is my story. This story cloth shows the journey of my people. We are called Himmung which means free people. Our journey begins long ago in China and continues to continues to Laos and then, then the refugee camps in Thailand. For over 125,000 human people, the journey ends in the United States. My Aunt Chu and Naya, Uncle Naya, Tao Cha, Che, sent this story cloth to me and my mother from the Chang Cam refugee camp in Thailand. I will never forget the day the story cloth arrived in the mail five years ago. When I looked at the pictures in the cloth, I remembered how many of my own family came to the United States in 1979. When I was 15 years old, everything in Hamong's story cloth is hand embroidered. Only the women used to do used to do the needlework, but since so many of our people have been detained in refugee camps, men like my uncle Naha helped make story cloths to pass the time and earn money. It takes many months to complete a story cloth. No patterns are used. No me measurements are made. The needlework is done by eye and comes out perfectly every time. Here in the United States, stories are told in a different form, though, through illustrations in a book. The Hamang people living here today continue the tradition of needlework. The stitches in a Hamang story cloth make pictures of life. This story cloth will tell you about our life. A long time ago, my ancestors lived in China. The ancient Chinese government wanted to change the way the Hmong lived, but many people would not give up on, up their culture and fled our, on foot across the river went and through jungles to Southeast Asia. Some went to Burma, some went to Thailand. Like many Hmong, many ancestors migrated to Laos. When they arrived in Laos, the Hmong settled in the tropical highlands where no one had lived before. They had to clear forests to build their villages and plant their crops. They grew corn and rice. The daily life in the Hmong villages included working in the fields from morning to the night. Both men and women tended the crops. Everything from tools to food were car was carried in different kinds of baskets on their backs. In Laos, the Hmong were able to farm as they wished and lived in peace for many years. When I was a child in the 1960s, my family lived in a wood and bamboo house with a thatched roof, roof made of palm leaves. Every morning, I helped my mother and sister pound rice. After breakfast, my family walked for almost two hours to our mountainside, fields where we worked all day. Every evening, we walked back home. At harvest time, we, were, we each carried a backpack basket filled with rice or corn. So Dia's family worked very hard every day. Look at the scene from the story cloth. What does it show? But as I was growing up, the peaceful life of my village was disappearing. Laos was caught in warfare. My country was divided in two. On one side, my Hamang men joined the loyalist, loyalist army, which was supported by the American government. On the other side was the communist regime, which is also cre recruited many Hmong men. My father left to fight with the loyalist troops. My family began to move from village to village to escape the communist soldiers. Communist soldiers came to the Hmong village and captured the men. They tied the Hmong's hands behind their backs and took them away. The Hmong men kneeled down and begged for their lives, but their soldiers didn't listen. The Hmong women couldn't do anything to help. They cried and cried because they knew they might never see their husbands and sons again. My father was sent to fight in Xinjiang province. He never came back. We don't know whether he was killed or captured. So let's clarify the two sides of the, in the conflict. Who were the loyalists and who were the communists? So the loyalists, um, 
Like Diaz's father, were loyal to the government. Communists fought to overthrow the government. Airplanes dropped bombs on the Hamong village. Many many houses were destroyed by flames. Women and children fled into the jungle and li lived in huts made from banana leaves. I remember having to get up in the middle of the night, feeling so afraid because we had to flee our hiding place. Sometimes we hid in the forest or in caves until the communist soldiers left. The communist soldiers sh shot at the Hmong men. The guerrilla soldiers came from their camps in the jungle and shot at the communists. Many people died. Guerrilla soldiers are fighters in small independent units. And then look closely at the story cloth. It's like a map. What details do you notice? In 1975, the Americans pulled out of Laos and the communist regime took over. My mother was determined to get us out of Laos. I was 10 years old when we fled. Escaping meant we had to cross the Mekong River, but the river was dangerous. People who didn't have boats had to cross by swimming or using inner tubes and bamboo poles to stay afloat. Many people died trying to cross this river. So look, look closely at the story cloth. It's like, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why was it so important to leave Laos after the communists took over? Like other escaping Hmong, we lived in a refugee camp when we arrived in Thailand. We lived in barracks. Some families planted small gardens. All the Hmong were very homesick. Earlier in Laos, my mother had destroyed all the documents we had relating to my father in the war, so we didn't have anything to prove my father was actually fighting on the side of the Americans. But when we got to the camp, one of my fa father's friends gave us a photo of my father taken at the front lines. The U.S. government sent staff to interview the Hmong refugees to determine who would be able to immigrate to America. When the American lady came to interview us, the photo of my father was our proof that we were qualified as political refugees. In 1979, after four and a half years in the camp, we left Thailand for America. As the buses left the camps, we said goodbye to all the people we knew. In some families, there were members who had to stay behind in Thailand, while their relatives were allowed to go to America. Many people cried. When my people first arrived in America, most didn't speak or write English. Many families had sponsors who picked us up at the airport. Everything about life in America was different for the Hmong. I was 15 years old when I came to this country. I'd never been to school, so I had to start everything from scratch. They wanted to put me in high school, but I didn't know anything. Then they wanted to put me in an adult school, but the teacher said I was too young. Finally, I started high school, 13 years later. I received my master's degree from Northern, Amer Northern Arizona University. I went back to Laos as an anthropologist in 1992 to work with Hmong and Leo women in their refugee camps in Thailand. This story cloth reminds me of the history of my family and of my people. Some of the memories it, be bring, it brings are good, and some are bad, but it is important for me to remember everything the Hmong have been through. Hmong women in America continue, continue to stitch new story cloth. We are all very, have li vivid memories about our lives and culture and history. The story cloth is a bridge to all the generations before us. When I saw, show the story cloth to my, my niece and nephew, who were both born here in the United States, I point to different pictures and tell them that this is what it was like. And these are just some interesting, cool things. Um, so let's think about Dia's personal story. Would you say it had, to, it had a happy ending? Why or why not? 